Imagine being able to share an interactive whiteboard that allows teams and classes to collaborate with each other no matter where they are, even on a mobile device. My name is Frank. Welcome to Learning in Technology. I'm glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Microsoft Whiteboard iOS app. You're going to be able to see how the iOS app works, all the wonderful things we can do with that app, and how we can even use that app at the same time with other people in order to collaborate. You'll be able to have people walking around, taking pictures, working on the whiteboard, and have it all show up in one central place. It's a powerful way to educate. It's a powerful way to collaborate. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more tips like this, and share with colleagues that could benefit from this. Let's go have a look at using the mobile Microsoft Whiteboard app and sharing it to collaborate with others. So to start off, I'd like to show you what's happening here on the desktop version of Microsoft Whiteboard. I've logged in using my Office 365 account. So I've logged in using that account. And you can see I have a number of whiteboards that are here. I'm gonna create a new whiteboard for the purposes of, of this demonstration. And you'll notice down at the bottom, I have my insert menu and I have my pen menu. So let's go into my insert menu here and I'll just put a sticky note on here saying desktop and maybe I'll move that over here and then maybe I'll add in some text and the text I'll say is hello world. We'll put the hello world text in there. So you can see I just have a few different elements here and we'll draw maybe a, a red circle. So I draw a red circle on there. We'll make that circle a happy face. So this is my desktop version. Now let's go and have a look at my iOS version. Okay, so here I am on my iPhone. I've already downloaded the app from the App Store, the Microsoft Whiteboard. And be careful because there are other whiteboard apps out there. You wanna make sure you get the Whiteboard app from Microsoft and you can see the icon here. So I'll just click that icon. And notice on the Whiteboard app that that new whiteboard I just created in the desktop app is there. And that's because I'm logged in with the same account. So I'll go into that whiteboard, it'll connect up to it. And when you see the whiteboard here, you might be, well, where's the desktop sticky note? Where's the hello world? Well, if you just pinch in, you'll notice that it's just off to the side and there's the whiteboard. So you may have to scroll in and out in order to be able to see things. But what I can do is down at the bottom here, you'll notice I have all or most of the same menu items. Let's go into the pen first. I don't have as many pens. You'll see that I have a black pen, a red pen. Now in my case, I have a pink pen and that's because I grab the pen and if I press on it, it'll actually come up. It'll allow me to change the thickness of the pen and will also allow me to change the color of the pen. So let's make that a nice green pen. And then for the red pen, I'll just change that and we'll make that maybe a nice orange pen and I'll make that a little bit thicker. So it just goes to show you that I can change the nature of the pen. I still get tools such as my highlighter. I get things such as my um, eraser on here. So if I hit the eraser, I can erase that little blemish I put on there. You get the lasso. Notice that certain things are not here. So for example, I don't have the ruler here and I have a few less pens. And if I go to the insert menu, I call it the insert menu, you'll notice here that I can put in a picture and that'll go to my photo roll. So let's say I wanna throw in this picture here. That picture now will appear on this whiteboard and it also will appear on the desktop version. And if I click on the canvas here, I can move things around. And if I click on the picture, I can move the picture around. You can do things such as expand the size of the picture. Just have to grab that little guy there. So you can expand the size of the picture if you'd like. You can rotate the picture. You can do all sorts of cool things. Obviously I can go back to my pens here and I can annotate the picture. Say that's the ocean, those are bushes, right? Uh, if I go in here, I can also go into the notes and I can put in my own sticky note. Hello from afar. So I can say hello from afar and that's gonna put in a sticky note here that allows me to put, you know, I can move that wherever I want to. And if anybody was watching on the desktop, they would see this. And I'll show you that in just a moment. 
We can also go into, notice once I've selected it, down below I can do things, I can vote on it so I can give it a thumbs up, I can go into the color of the sticky note, I can copy the sticky note, I can trash the sticky note, and I can also cut or do an alt text on the sticky note. So there's a number of different options down here at the bottom that will allow me to adjust an object. Once I select the object, that's where I get the selection here to, you know, cut, delete, like, all of those good things. If I go into the plus insert menu here, I can paste something that I had. So if I grab, say, an email text or something that I wanted to discuss, I could paste it in. I could put in text. So in this case here, I can put in whatever text I want, and I could say something like, uh, this is from iOS. Put that in there, say done, and you'll see there's a little text in there that says this is from iOS. It's a little bit hidden inside the picture because that's where my last press was. So if I go in there, I can go into the plus menu here, a really neat thing that I like to do, and there's no grids, lists, and follow-ups. I won't demonstrate every single one of them, but I can go to my camera. And it'll ask you if you allow access from the camera, but let's say I want to look at a map here. I can go in and take a picture. And now I've taken that picture, I can use that photo that I took, and that is now part of the canvas. Let's just move the canvas over, grab the photo I just took. Again, I can expand that out. And maybe we can now have a discussion on this photo. We can go in and take notes and we could say things like, you know, let's make sure that we get some water here. And that's not very bright, so I'll grab a black pen and we'll say, Let's get some water here. So you can see that this gives me a whole interaction. But it goes beyond this. There's even more that I can do, even with the mobile app. Notice I have my three bars here. This will allow me to set things like ink to table, ink to shape. So if I do ink to shape as an example, I can go in here and if I draw a triangle, so we'll just go in and we'll draw a triangle. It's not a very good triangle, but it inks it to shape. So that's a handy feature. I can go in here and I can export it out as a, as, a, as a document or an image. I can go in and I can post this to Teams. I can send an email summary of what we did here. I can format the background, clear the canvas altogether. Let's do that. Well, I won't do it yet because I want to show you this on the desktop. So you see we have all of the settings on there that are available to us. I can also go in and I can share this. So underneath here, let's say I want to share this with Bruce. So I have a good friend in my organization named Bruce Wayne and I'm going to share it with Bruce. Now Bruce has now been invited, and I'm gonna invite Bruce to be part of this meeting. So Bruce has now been invited to this meeting. Now let's go and have a look at the desktop and see how things are looking over there. I'm back on my desktop and I've just included my iOS device here as well so that we can actually see both. So again, if I go onto my desktop here, I'll scroll out a little, or scroll out a little bit and you can see, for example, here I have the triangle, so I'll change the menu here and may just move it up. So underneath the triangle, if I go in on, on my desktop and I start coloring this in green, you can see over here on my iPhone, it's also green. You can see that it also identifies who's doing this. So I go in there and it's identified as user one. It's really me in both locations. So I'm actually, I'm logged into both locations. So I'm the same user. But remember we invite, invited Bruce in and he's gonna uh, join us in just a few moments here. So if I go in on my desktop here, I have a few different uh, uh, choices here. But if I go back here, let's go ahead and insert a sticky note here. And we'll put the sticky note. Notice how it appears on the iOS device. So we are coordinating. I'll just do hello again, not very exciting, but we'll put hello there. But it is exciting that I now have it in both locations. So that's a great way to collaborate. Uh, well, in this case, I guess I'm collaborating with myself, but I could have a whiteboard that I prepared on my desktop and I could add and augment that whiteboard when I'm out traveling. Now let's look at the power of when I bring another person in and how I can collaborate with them. Okay, so now things are getting pretty busy. I have my iOS device here, I have my desktop here, and I've invited Bruce in, and he's here using a web-based client on a Raspberry Pi of all things. But notice he can come in and join the whiteboard. So Bruce can come in and join the whiteboard, and now when Bruce joins the whiteboard, he'll see everything I see. Now he'll have, because he's coming in from the web client, he's quite limited in terms of the things that he can do. But notice he's seeing the whiteboard here. And if he goes in, he can scroll in and scroll out. So he can move around on the whiteboard. And notice that it says, you know, this is from iOS. This is from iOS. And let's just take my uh, client over here, my 
iOS client. So you can see that it's, this is from iOS on the iOS device. This is from iOS on the desktop. This is from iOS on the web client from Bruce. Now you'll also notice that up here, the participant Bruce Wayne, I can see who's collaborating on this particular whiteboard. So you can see that Bruce is active here. So we're gonna bring Bruce back up here and Bruce can go in and let's say Bruce adds a sticky note. So here's Bruce's sticky note. He can change the color of the sticky note. So we'll say, Bruce, you, you do green sticky notes. I can move it around. So we'll put it right over here and notice it appears right here on my desktop and it appears over here on my iOS device as well. So I can go in and I can make changes to the sticky note. Notice here that on the um, desktop, it goes to that sort of blue color. It goes to the blue color. It will when I work with it. Oh, let me grab Bruce back here. He's disappeared on me. If I go and type something in here, I'll say something like, hello. Type in some text here. We'll go, hello from Bruce. And when we put that information in there, you'll see that that will show up in both locations as well. Uh, it is something on the iOS device that this will actually, if I move this around a little bit, it will refresh and the color will change, but it might require me to go out and back into the uh, the sticky notes. It's kind of a little glitch or a gotcha there. There's there's a few of them in here. But for the most part, you'll see that it's it's pretty much the same thing in every location, no matter where I am. I'm going to see the same information pretty much in the same way and it's going to allow me to collaborate in a very effective manner. And if I go in on my desktop here, well actually I'll go in on my iOS device just so we go here. If I go in on my iOS device and I add in another sticky note and I'll say another, uh, about her, another iOS note and we pop that in there. I spelt it horribly, but you can see here that uh, that I go in here, another iOS note, it did autocorrect for me. I can scroll in, I can see that it's there. Bruce gets to see it and it goes onto my desktop as well. I just have to move this out of the way a little bit. So there's a great way that we can collaborate using an iOS device in Microsoft Whiteboard. But before I go, I wanna go in my iOS device. I'm gonna go back. So now I'm, I've am i gone out of my iOS device and I'm gonna go over here to, to Bruce as well and we'll put him back to his main menu. And I'll even take the desktop and go back to its main menu. So I'm in the main menu for all three, okay? So we're kind of going back to the beginning. So in my iOS device, I'm gonna create a new whiteboard right here. So I'm gonna create a new whiteboard in iOS and I'm going to go in and you'll notice underneath the insert menu, I also have templates. And templates are a great way if I wanna start a new brainstorming session or open up a Kanban board. There's all sorts of very cool different templates that are part of the Microsoft Whiteboard now. And so there's some really neat stuff here in terms of, of working with, uh, with the whiteboard. So let's go ahead and do a problem solving grid in here. And you can see that it's automatically created a nice problem solving grid. I'm actually gonna go in and we're gonna invite Bruce back in again. So let's invite Bruce back to help us with some of our problem solving. So we'll go ahead and send him an invitation. So he's in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my desktop and you'll notice that underneath my desktop, the whiteboard automatically pops up. So I'll double click on it, it'll connect up to it. And there's my problem solving template. And if I go over to Bruce, Bruce is going to be, let's just do a little refresh here. So Bruce is gonna have a invitation here, it takes a few moments, join this whiteboard, he's gonna join it. And now Bruce can help us with our problem solving. Oh, so in this case here, check it out. An object type was added that we can't display in this version of the Might Whiteboard. So this is a little bit of a gotcha. So remember how we had that uh, sticky note where the color didn't change for me? This is an example of an object that cannot be shown in the web-based version. So what we wanna do is get Bruce a mobile device or have Bruce use the desktop version of Whiteboard. So that is a little bit of a gotcha in here that not all objects can be shared with everyone on every platform. And uh, so this is important to us. We'll go back here. So unfortunately, he can join this, this team. He can go in and, and participate. You'll see that he's joined up on the desktop up here if I view the roster. And if he goes in, he can certainly scribble on the whiteboard 
and when he scribbles on the whiteboard you can see down here he scribbled but he can't see the object so just be aware and test it especially if you're going to use web-based clients but for the most part we're going to go in I just moved a bunch of notes around with my thumb but uh, for the most part you know we want to be able to make sure that we're using um, a client that supports all of the different visuals so a mobile client or a desktop client thank you so much for watching I hope this video was useful for you if it was hit like and subscribe and I hope it sparked some ideas of how you can have some interesting classroom and team collaboration to be more effective and more productive here are some other videos on the channel that you might be interested in, and we'll see you next time.